Although widely misunderstood, cleansing the blood is probably one of the most important weapons in the alternative health arsenal for killing pathogens, achieving optimal wellness, and defeating cancer. What we're talking about is using herbal blood cleansers to eliminate systemic pathogens, remove toxic residues from the blood, stimulate the lymph system, which is essential for keeping your blood clean, and destroy rogue cells to assist your immune system in minimizing the chances of malignant growths taking root in your body. A good blood cleansing formula can literally drive bad things out of your body or prevent them from entering in the first place. So what exactly is a blood cleanser? First of all, the very name blood cleanser is really a euphemism. In fact, this formula and almost every herb in it is considered by herbalists to be anti-cancer, though not acknowledged as such by government agencies. Variations of this formula have been used for hundreds of years by Native American tribes. Nowadays, you'll find versions such as the Hoxie formula, SEACT, Jason Winter's tea, and my own blood cleansing formula. Not surprisingly, as we go through the individual herbs typically found in this formula, you'll find that many of them are on the FDA cautionary list, and virtually all of them are on the Canadian list. On the other hand, you'll also find that a number of studies actually support what herbalists have been saying for decades about these herbs' remarkable properties. In any case, since we can't talk about the cancer preventive properties of specific formulas, let's talk about the individual herbs found in this formula and why they work. Native Americans have used chaparral for centuries as an anti-cancer remedy. In fact, it is the cornerstone of most anti-cancer herbal formulas. Exactly how it works is open to debate, but some of the main actions are, it's one of the most powerful antioxidants in nature. The primary biochemical responsible for this is NDGA, nortohydroguaryetic acid. NDGA is so effective that it is often used as a food preservative. Chaparral is also antipathogenic. In other words, it kills viruses, bacteria, and parasites. It has even shown promise with herpes. It cleanses the lymph system. It cleanses the blood. It cleanses the liver. It cleanses the urinary tract. And it's a natural chelator that clears heavy metals from the blood. Studies show that chaparral may also inhibit uncontrolled cell proliferation as well as damage to DNA and a number of university studies have indicated that chaparral can destroy and dissolve many types of tumors. And don't believe the nonsense you may read on the net about liver damage being associated with chaparral. The reality is there are no studies that support these claims. In fact, following a lengthy investigation, a panel of medical experts concluded no clinical data was found to indicate that chaparral is inherently a hepatic toxin. In late 1994, this report was submitted to the FDA and Chaparral was subsequently given a clean bill of health by the American Herbal Products Association. And in 2001, a retrospective clinical study published in the Journal of Alternative and Complementary Medicine found no evidence of liver toxicity from the use of low-dose Chaparral. The bottom line is that Chaparral can be found in most blood cleansing formulas, and quite simply, when it comes to cancer, there are a number of studies that show the benefits of Chaparral and NDGA. And then there are the numerous studies that show that NDGA is more effective than acyclovir when it comes to treating HIV, herpes simplex, and the human papillomavirus. Then there's red clover. It's another staple of herbal blood cleansing formulas and has a long history as a medicinal herb. It's an excellent blood purifier that over time gradually cleanses the bloodstream and corrects deficiencies in the circulatory system. But among classic herbalists, it is probably best known as one of the main herbs for treating all varieties of cancer anywhere in the body. Not surprisingly, most doctors, the FDA, and many new school herbalists have dismissed red clover as useless in dealing with cancer. However, researchers at the National Cancer Institute indeed found anti-tumor properties in red clover. Genistein, a biochemical in red clover, has the ability to prevent tumors from developing the blood supplies they need to survive, thus starving them and killing them. And then there's burdock root. Burdock root is probably the most famous detoxifying agent in the herbal arsenal. It cleanses the blood by increasing the effectiveness of all the body's elimination systems. And its diuretic effect helps the kidneys filter impurities from the blood. It also helps push toxins out through the skin and boost the ability of the liver to remove toxins. By pushing toxins out through multiple elimination channels, 
Burdick can purify the blood with minimal side effects and with minimal stress to the body. In addition, studies indicate that Burdick has both anti-inflammatory and strong antibacterial properties. It also appears to be hepatoprotective, anti-diabetic, and protective against mammary, colon, ovarian, lung, breast, and pancreatic cancer, to name just a few. Poke root and yellow dock are both powerful blood and lymph cleansers inciting and increasing the action of lymph glands throughout the entire body. Not surprisingly, both herbs are staples of many traditional herbal anti-cancer formulas. If used improperly, poke root can be toxic, but if used properly and at the correct dosage, animal studies have shown that it can enhance the immune system and has anti-cancer properties. Like poke root, yellow dock can negatively impact red blood cells if improperly used. But also like poke root, if used properly, studies have shown that it has strong anti-cancer properties. In fact, a 2012 study instigated by the use of yellow dock in the SEAC formula found that yellow dock displays remarkable cytotoxic activities on several tested leukemia cell lines. And let's not forget mistletoe. Mistletoe's use for treating cancer is so widespread in Central Europe that it actually is estimated that as many as 60 to 70 percent of cancer patients incorporate it into their therapy. There have been numerous studies in Europe, especially in Germany, that have reported the benefits of mistletoe extract in fighting several types of cancer, including pancreatic and breast cancer. A National Cancer Institute review of more than 70 studies of mistletoe's effect on cancer in humans although they noted design flaws in a number of the studies, nevertheless found consistent results across the board, including tumor shrinkage, higher survival rates, improved blood counts, and better quality of life for the patients. Sheep sorrel, which actually comes from the same family as yellow dock, shares many of its cancer-fighting properties. When used in combination with other herbs, it possesses potent antioxidant and DNA protective activity, properties that are common to natural anti-cancer agents. It also contains an extremely powerful antibacterial agent called rumicin that has made sheep sorrel a treatment for infections including staphylococcus, E. coli, and salmonella. American and Canadian Indian tribes use sheep sorrel as a treatment for cancer, which is how it came to be used in the more modern versions of anti-cancer formulas. Dr. Chester Stock at Sloan Kettering in New York studied sheep sorrel for over three years in the mid-70s. His conclusion was that sheep sorrel was found to be responsible for the destruction of cancer cells in the body and inhibited metastasis by actually causing cancer cells to return to the original tumor site. Not surprisingly, this information was not made available to the public. But even more disturbing, when the Canadian Ministry of Health and Welfare saw the study, they immediately banned sheep sorrel from sale and distribution. The use of cat's claw, or Encaria tomentosa, dates back before recorded history among South American Indian tribes who used it for a variety of purposes. Nowadays, the plant is recognized by herbalists mainly due to its antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, anti-cancer, and diuretic properties. Because of its anti-inflammatory properties, cat's claw is frequently found in formulations designed to treat rheumatoid arthritis and osteoarthritis. The plant also has a very beneficial influence on our immune system and is used in the treatments of various types of tumors, specifically brain tumors, leukemia, cervical carcinoma, melanoma, and medulloblastoma. And it is also used as an herbal supplement for HIV patients. The anti-tumor activity of Encaria tomentosa has been verified in a number of studies, even though researchers can reach no agreement as to which components in the bark are most responsible. Fortunately, not knowing which part to isolate and patent may be a problem for researchers and pharmaceutical companies, but not for us in the alternative health community, as long as we use an herbal extract that contains all components rather than isolates. Then there's bloodroot. Bloodroot has been researched and found to be a potent cellular support agent in addition to being a potent anti-cancer agent. Outside of the laboratory, it has been used to treat tens of thousands of people over the last century and a half. Many of these, according to some estimates, as many as 80 percent, a number that is certainly exaggerated to some degree, experienced remission of malignancy and longer life expectancies than people with similar conditions who choose different treatments. Nevertheless, research supports the general direction of the anecdotal evidence. Peer-reviewed studies indicate that, like cat's claw, it is the alkaloids in bloodroot, particularly sanguinarine, that are most likely responsible for its cancer-protective benefits. In fact, 
Laboratory studies have shown that it can help with prostate, breast, and pancreatic cancer, as well as many other types of cancer by causing cancer cell apoptosis. In other words, it kills cancer cells without harming healthy cells. Oregon grapefruit is frequently used by herbalists as a blood cleanser, and as its extremely bitter taste would suggest, to stimulate the liver and gallbladder. It purifies the blood and cleanses the liver by helping to stimulate bile flow and releasing toxins and helping purge the spleen. It also helps the liver metabolize wastes and toxins, and because of its antipathogenic properties, is used by natural healers in the treatment of chronic hepatitis B. The primary active biochemical in Oregon grapefruit is berberine. And when it comes to cancer, there have been a large number of studies that have highlighted berberine's ability to suppress the growth of a wide variety of tumor cells, including breast cancer, leukemia, melanoma, pancreatic cancer, oral and tongue cancers, and prostate cancer. Paired with Oregon grapefruit is golden seal. Golden seal root is a multi-purpose type of herb that provides immune system support and cleanses vital organs. It works both in the intestinal tract and systemically it promotes the functioning capacity of the heart, the lymphatic and respiratory systems, the liver, the spleen, the pancreas, and the colon. Like Oregon grapefruit, the primary biochemical in golden seal is berberine, which in addition to its anti-cancer properties, appears to have powerful antimicrobial actions that can kill different types of yeast, parasites, bacteria, and even MRSA. It is useful as a part of a blood cleansing formula because of its ability to remove pathogens from the bloodstream. And last but not least is cayenne. The hot fruit of the cayenne plant has been used as medicine for centuries. It is extremely beneficial for the circulatory system, helping to improve the elasticity of the walls of both the arterial and venous systems, maintain normal blood platelet function, and to help maintain normal blood pressure, if already within normal range throughout the body. Cayenne is also used in many herbal formulas, such as this one, as a driver to push the other herbs in the formula into the bloodstream more quickly. As a side note, there are some studies that indicate that capsaicin, the hot active component in cayenne, may have the ability to induce apoptosis in some cancer cells all on its own. So where do we stand with our blood cleansing formula? The roots of this formula, no pun intended, go back several centuries. But now research has finally begun to catch up with it, and most of the herbs used in this formula have been identified in multiple studies test tube, animal, and human, as having strong anti-cancer and anti-pathogenic properties. Although most people use this formula as part of their biannual liver and gallbladder flush, it should be considered in its own right as an important formula to be used in maintaining optimal health. When used regularly, it will work to purify and optimize your blood, cleanse your liver, kill viruses and bacteria, destroy cancer, and much more. Now note, this is a very powerful formula that is strongly therapeutic in nature, which means it should only be used for detoxing or on an as-needed basis. One bottle every six months is adequate for detoxing and basic maintenance. Or taking one or two bottles as needed for bacterial and viral infections as well as cell abnormalities should be considered a core part of your personal health program. And one bottle a week for up to three weeks is acceptable in special circumstances. But more than that, you don't want to do. This is not a nutritional support formula. You don't want to take this formula on a daily basis for weeks on end like a multivitamin. In this case, more is not necessarily better. Now, to get past the taste, which is very bitter and very hot, I recommend adding it to two ounces of thin, sweet, undiluted juice such as apple or pear juice, downing it in one gulp like a shot of liquor, and then swishing some plain juice in your mouth to clear the taste. The bottom line. When used properly, a good blood cleansing formula is one of the most powerful formulas in the alternative health arsenal.